Well, this afternoon, I'm going to focus on Yosemite National Park, and I'm going to look at the top 10 usability enhancements for ArcGIS desktop. So to start our list, we're going to count backwards, down from 10. So with number 10, we have a new user experience where the tables and the windows can hide, allowing us to have more real estate to work on our map. Then when they reappear and disappear again, notice that the map does not need to redraw. Or we can choose to pin the window open and continue our work. Now, this works with other windows also. Let's look at the Identify window. I can dock the Identify window in numerous locations on my map. It will hide and reappear when the tool is activated again. Another user interface enhancement is a geoprocessing menu item. We have co combined commonly accessed tools in one menu, and you can also access your geoprocessing options all in one dialog. We expect these user interface enhancements to improve your mapping experience. Now to number nine on our list. We have a new toolbar at the top of the table of contents. Here we can list the layers by drawing order. We're familiar with that. Also, by list by source. We've seen this before. What's new is to list the layers by visibility. Now, this is a smart legend. We have all of the visible features listed on the legend with their symbology. I can click on the symbology like I am doing with the ranger stations, and they'll flash on the map. Also, I can do the same with the major rivers. Now, as I zoom in on the map, additional features will become visible in the table of contents. For instance, the points of interest. The points of interest has a scale of dependency set, so it doesn't appear until the scale reaches 1 to 100,000 or larger. We're making it easier to see what's visible in your map. Next on the table of contents is a list by selection. I've already selected some of the climbing areas. If I want to select additional features, let me use select by lasso. Here we have additional features selected, and they're identified in the legend. I can also use this list to um, identify which features I want to select. Maybe I want to start selecting bouldering areas, so I can just toggle bouldering areas on. Or maybe I'm finished with viewing a feature, like the cell towers, so I can toggle the visibility off. By adding these various layer views to the table of contents, it's just a nice addition to the traditional table of contents. Moving on to number eight on our list is the tables. Let's open up the table for the climbing areas. Now I can dock the, the tables anywhere on my map. Let's add some more space here. And I can view various tables by using the tab interface at the bottom. Here I have a highlighted field in one table. And we can view the selected features in another table. Or if I'd like, I can view two different tables in a side-by-side -side view. New in the tables is also a group of tasks commonly accessed at the top of the tables, making it easier for you to work with your tables. Once we're finished, I can close a table or hide it for future access. Now, number seven on our list is enhanced reporting capabilities. Now, I selected some of the climbing areas, and I want to create a report of the climbing areas. Let's use the report wizard to create this report. I'll select some of my fields. And what's new is a, the capability to create a report with just the selected features. So let's choose Selected Set. We'll go through and have a grouping, some sorting options, a layout of your report options, and some nice style options. You can also customize your own if you want. Once I finish the report, I can use this in a map layout. I can export it. I can customize it a little bit more. But number seven on our list is enhanced reporting capabilities, allowing us to use selected features only. Number six on our list is a new, the new search window that John showed us earlier. Now, there's a lot of climbing areas in the Yosemite National Park identified here in yellow. Let's move out or zoom out a little bit to see the valley. I want to identify hazards that impact these climbers because I want them to be safe. And I'm, in particular, I'm thinking about rockfall hazards. So I'm going to use this search to find this information. Now, I can search my local computer or I can search an enterprise. 
search. So let's search for Yosemite. Now I have over 140 features that are identified. That's a lot, so I'm going to narrow down the search and we'll type in hazard. Now I can found the rockfall hazards layer that I was looking for. You can drag and drop it into your map. Now the search window is not just for searching for data. You can also search for the tools that you're looking for. Water greatly impacts life in the valley. So I'm going to search for hydrology. We have the toolboxes and the various tools that are available for hydrology. Or maybe I need to project some data. As I start typing the word project, then we can find the tools that we need, see the descriptions about the tools, and then open up the tool. Whoop, well, that's not the tool I want. I want this one. Define the projection. When I open up the dialog, I can input my various items that I need and run the tool as I need. What's important is to remember that the search window will greatly improve your productivity by decreasing the amount of time that you look for your data and for your tools. Next is number five, if you're keeping up with me. And that is the symbology search. So it's a different kind of search. So let's move over and turn on a different layer. I'm now going to turn on a helicopter landing zones. Let's say that a climber has been injured and we need to rescue them. Well, as I turn on the helicopter landing zones, we have a standard green symbol. I want to find a symbol that better represents this layer. I can search through the 20,000 symbols that we have, or I can use the new search dialog for symbols. Let's look for a red push pin. Or better yet, since this is a helicopter landing zone, let's look for a helicopter. I found the helicopter, and we'll increase the size so we can see it. And now, for number five, you've seen how nice search is for a symbol rather than browsing through the various sim symbol list.